Similarly now, for the y, I can divide the y, as I said, into lumps of anything I want. I can divide it into lumps of 5, lumps of 10. So each one of those divisions over here can be, I don't know, 10 units if I want to. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. Of course, the lack of space over here is preventing us from going all the way to 100, which is something we can easily do. So I'm going to take another numerical value of over here, which is 10, 50, and just so that I can illustrate this. Each ordered pair represents the address of a point on the Cartesian plane. So these are called the coordinates of a point. It's how I can locate the point located at 3, 15. That is to say, suppose you want to to find a friend, and your friend is telling you, you know, from where you are right now, you need to move, but only in horizontal or vertical lanes. Remember the popular video game Pac-Man? Pac-Man can only move right, left, or up and down. So think about it in this way. How many units, how many divisions can I move on the x-axis and then how many divisions can I move up or down on the y-axis should give you a unique point. For instance, if I moved one, two, three units on the x-axis, and then I moved up from there 15 units on the y-axis, then I get to this point over here, which is the point 3, 15. And that's exactly the point that we have over there, the first point, and that's a unique point. Why unique? Because you cannot get there in any other way, and because when you get 3, 15, you get only one point, one location, which is right here. And so if we continue to plot more of those points, like the point 4, 20, so again, I draw a vertical line from here, and a horizontal line from there, where those two lines meet, I'll get the point 4, 20. And then I'll continue doing that for 5 and for 6, etc., etc. And then once I end up with those points, so we have 6 and 30, and we can continue this on and on and on, but I'm going to stop until here. If I connect all of those points together, I'll end up with a figure that represents this relation. This figure is the graph of the equation of the function given to us y equals 5x. In this case, it just happens to be a straight line. Okay, now I'm going to move on to something else, which is terminology, but before I get to there, I need you to inspect for a minute this format, this format, and this format, and answer yourselves the following question. How do those three things relate to each other? The graphical representation, the algebraic representation, and the tabular representation. Okay, now that you're back, here's your, what I expected that you've answered. First of all, this relationship between the algebraic and the tabular is really, really easy. In the algebraic relationship y equal 5 times x, I am replacing numerical values for x, but for each x value, I am finding the corresponding y value. So y equal 5x is represented in this table by the number of x values and then the y values that correspond to it. Similarly, y equal 5x is represented by ordered pair over here on that line. And so the graphical interpretation is as follows, and here's where you need to pay attention because this is really important. This means, this line, although you may not hear him say it, but I think he's saying to us the following. Every point on me, that is to say the line, every point on the line, 
is a solution of this equation. What do I mean by a solution of this equation? I mean if I take an x value over here on the x axis, and then I replace it in here, I'm going to get a certain y value. This xy ordered pair is found on this line. So the line is the combination. It's the result of all the solution of this equations. And it's also every point on the line is a solution in here. And every solution of this equation is a point in there. Okay, now we have two things to be taken into consideration. One, I, want, I would like to ask you, are the possible values of x any number I want, or are there some values for x that I cannot choose in the context of this particular question, this particular problem? Okay, let me give you a hint. Is it possible to find a y value for x equal negative 1? Numerically speaking, if I replace x by negative 1, then y should be equal 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So numerically speaking, the ordered pair negative 1, negative 5, is a valid solution for this equation. Now let's think about this logically speaking. I presented the x to be the number of correct answers on a certain test. What is the smallest, the lowest possible number or numerical value for x? Absolutely, of course. Suppose you got all the answers incorrect, then the x value that corresponds to that would be x equals 0. And for that, obviously, you're going to get a grade of 0, because 5 times 0 is 0. And to confirm that, the point zero, 0, is part of my graph. And so think about it this way. If x equals 0 is the smallest possible value, could I take x equal negative 1 to be a numerical value in this problem? Of course not. So there is a certain limitation. There is a certain restriction on the values that I can take for the independent variable x. In this case, x cannot be below 0. We call the set of numbers that I can choose values to replace the independent variable with the domain of the function. And so the word domain means set of all possible values or the independent value. In this case, it's called x, but I don't want to use x all the time, because the independent variable can be represented by any letter of the alphabet you may wish to, to use. 